Um, if this sounds confusing to you, it is. Because we don't really know what Paul's talking about here. We do know, he talks about, there's going to be this time where this lawlessness is going to take place. But we're going, well, when is that going to happen? Because if you look back on history, almost every generation is going, this is it. This, you can't get any worse than this. Well, then it does. Then it does. Yeah. Then it does. So, what, how, how I understand this is that sometimes, um, I like to say we have to look through a, um, binoculars and, and kind of seeing far off that we do see these passive event, historical events and you say, oh, it's bad, but it's still, you know, it's going to be the end time when it gets really, really bad. Can I say really, really, really bad? <laughs> um, so that lawlessness, and the question is, well, who's this lawless one? Obviously Satan is, but who, who's that going to be on earth? Luther, during his time, said it was the Pope. You know, because he was, he said that we're saved by our works. And that was, for Luther, that was, that was the, 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 the great sin of telling people you're saved by your works and not by what Jesus had done for you. So, so every, I think every generation has that. I mean, we can look at that. I mean, I can remember from the year 2000 uh, till now, we've had numerous people saying the end is here and the day has come and the day is gone. Remember, Jesus said... Who only knows when the last day is? God the Father. God the Father knows. He says, but Jesus says, always be ready. for, Be ready, always be ready. You never know what's going to happen. And so what Paul is saying here, and we don't know exactly what he said, but, he, but I'm sure what he's saying is, guys, it looks bad, but take heart, Jesus is coming. And remember, God is with you. Remember, there's going to be a resurrection. Remember, God's always in charge. Remember, remember the promises that God made. Hold on to the promises. Make sure, as I like to say, keep your eyes on Jesus. Keep your eyes on Jesus, knowing, knowing that all this stuff is going to happen. But that it needs to happen, Jesus said. It needs to happen. The wars and rumors of war. All that needs to happen. That's, I think that's part of us. God strengthening our faith, going, let's trust in Jesus. Jesus said it's going to happen. Now, this the, verse 13 to the end, this is, I love to call the great gospel. This is the, the promise that God has made to us that we can rest assured. But we always think, always to give thanks to God for you, brothers, beloved by the Lord, because God chose you, as the first fruits, to be saved through sanctification by the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit came and made you holy in belief in the truth. Now what's the truth? We are saved by God's grace. That's the truth. That we are saved because by God's grace. God forgives. That's the great truth. Because not anything that we do is solely what God has done. To this, He called you through our gospel, the good news of God's salvation. The Jesus did it all for you so that you may attain the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. So then, brothers, knowing that you have this promise, and that God has kept his promises, he's keeping his promises, and he will keep his promises, stand firm and hold to the traditions, the things that we handed down to you, the teachings, the doctrine, the remind, reminding you of the promises that were taught to you by us, either by our spoken word or by letter. Now may our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father, who loved us and gave us eternal comfort and good hope through grace, comfort your hearts and establish them in every good work and word. So even though it's going to get bad, and it will, it is. I mean, historically, we can look back on history and say, oh, this is bad, bad, bad. God chose you to save you, and that will never change. God says, I made a promise to you that I will never leave you nor forsake you. Now, what is the one thing that we can always turn to or look back on and say, oh, that's where God made his promise to me? Baptism. At baptism. baptism. Baptism is huge where we can say, God made his promise there. For me, July 5th, 1965. God made his promise that he would always be with me and never leave me more, nor forsake me. There's God's promise right there. Were there times in our life where I wanted to run away from God? Oh, yes. 
And what did God do? Broke your foot. Well, he broke my foot. <laughs> <laughs> he slowed me down. He tackled me. He got me back. You know what that is. And, and always with, always with, I saved you. I love you. I'm going to be with you no matter what. Even in the good times and even, might seem, in the bad times as well. That we can do that. Knowing on the last day what's going to happen. I'm going to rise again from the dead. Now, a little side note here. My wife, my wife, my daughter, uh, she has a composition class. Um, and she wrote, have you seen it yet? She just did it last night in her class. She wrote, uh, or, well, it was a headband and everything on Lord Thee I Love With All My Heart. And the last verse, when my, either, you're, either she's going to have that played at my funeral, but the last part, you know, Lord, at last night, angels come to Abram's bosom, bear me home that I may die unfearing. And when this narrow chamber keep the coffin, my body safe in peaceful sleep until thy reappearing. And then my daughter, I'm not going to try to cry here because it was awesome. <laughs> she had the trumpets. And then from death awaken me with these my eyes with joy may see. I mean, it was beautiful. She musically interpreted it beautifully like a good Lutheran. <laughs> of course, I did probably say to her a few times, you know, when you do this, I want you to play a trumpet part here when, I, when we do that part. So I'm going to take a little credit for that. Even though she says, no, you never told me that, Dad. Okay, but it was pretty cool because we know that, that we can die unfearing. And we as Christians, we say, we say the person didn't die. It, that person's just sleeping. Paul makes that reference. Those who fall asleep in the Lord... We're just resting in the tomb. Great rest. Finally, I can get some sleep. And then, you know, when Jesus comes, he's going to raise us all. What a wonderful, wonderful promise that God gives to us and that we can hold on to that. So then, what do we do with these promises? Do we just keep them to ourselves or do we want to tell others about it? Well, that's where the psalm comes in. The psalm of the day, Psalm 148. It's a wonderful psalm of praise, and really the praise is, is telling others what God has done. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise Him in the heights. Praise Him, all His angels. Praise Him, all you hosts. Praise Him, sun and moon. Praise Him, all you shining stars. Praise Him, you highest heavens, and you waters above the heavens. Let, praise, uh, let them praise the name of the Lord, for He has commanded, and they were created, and He established them forever and ever. He gave a decree, and it shall not pass away. Praise the Lord from earth. Praise sea creatures in all uh, deeps. Fire and hail, snow and mist, stormy wind fulfilling its word. Mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, beasts and all livestock, creeping things and flying birds, kings of earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the earth, young 